The will honor to the apostles and elders of great millstone that rule well, laboring the word and doctrine, shallow women in peace. May that be unto the elect of the nation of Israel. Now this will be titled, which that, that introduction, Kal Halayum, or Nawathan, means giving, right, to give, giving. Kal Halayum being all praises. La, meaning unto. Yahweh being the name of the Heavenly Father, who the world ignorantly calls God, Jehovah, and various other names. Bahasha meaning in the name. Yahweh Shai being the, one, the true name of the one the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. Okay. Shalom meaning peace. May, again, may that be unto the elect. So Joel chapter 3 and verse 9 says, Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. So we're going into a time, or in a time, of the third war. Right, we're moving into a time of Jacob's trouble. And you're seeing all prophecies, earthquakes, famines, pestilences, all these various tokens, as it speaks about in Ezra. All these different tokens coming to pass. So we're able to measure diligently the time. Okay, we're able to see. We don't know the day or the hour. You know, Yahweh Shai himself doesn't know the day or the hour even when ascended up into heaven. But the charge or the, the um decree will go forth from the father given unto an angel all right and he will send back Yahweh Shai with the angels to gather the elect but no one knows that day or the hour but with there's many signs right as the scriptures call them tokens which tell you how we know <clears throat> how we know what we know right how we know where we are in the prophetic timeline so second Ezra chapter 5 verse 1 it says, Nevertheless, as come in the tokens, behold, the day sh shall come, that they which dwell upon earth shall be taken in a great number, and the way of truth shall be hidden, and the land shall be barren of faith. And right, the faith altogether throughout the earth is, is damn near invisible. <clears throat> now, I don't mean invisible, but I mean non existent. All right, even these other pagans, these other idols, the other cultures of the earth, and the nations of the earth, rather. Because it says in Psalm 96 and verse 5 says, For all the gods of the nations are idols, but Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai made the heavens. Okay? So these other cultures, these other nations have their gods, they have their idols. But even in them, they don't believe. Right? So how much more so in the truth? That everyone has become drunk upon E upon E's wine. Right? E is a contraction we use for Esau, Edom, right? When you go into Genesis 25, that is the name of the so-called white man, according to the scriptures. Right? It's not based on your skin color. It's based on your lineage. You might have whatever appearance, they will go back to a certain line. And not everyone of a certain phenotype is necessarily of a certain genotype. Okay, so it's not a carnal thing. It's not necessarily a skin color thing, right? But that was the indicator of E. Right, he came out red all over like a hairy garment. Okay, but not to say everyone that's pale skinned is an E, and not to say everyone that is dark skinned, brown skinned, or has this typical Negro, Latino, Native American appearance is necessarily an Israelite. Right, you have something called tears among the wheat. Right, but all these nations have taken on E's philosophy, right, due to him being in power in that control seat over presiding over the whole earth all right revelation chapter 17 verses 1 and 2 says and there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked to me saying unto me come hither i will show unto thee the judgment of the great hall that sitteth upon many waters right, and when we read down we'll find out the great hall is babylon the great okay what the world calls the united states of america and the waters we'll pull it out of this chapter revelation 17 and 15 Said, and he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the horse sitteth, right, so where the beast, the uh, sorry, the um the the one that's presiding over the beast, Babylon, that has rulership over the new, the neo uh, Roman Empire, right? The Anglo American Empire, which is just a revival of the pagan Roman Empire. Okay, so that would be made up by NATO, the ten uh it's a ten horns, and sorry. EU, the ten horns, and NATO, the seven heads. 
right? That was a miss. That was a slip up. I misspoke on that. So the seven heads are NATO and the ten horns will be the EU. And those together make up the beast system, right? Which is headed, which is ruled by E, right? And the Lord is very displeased with the rulership and the spirits that E pushes out. So Revelation 17 and verse 15 once more. And he saith unto me, the waters which I saw us where the horse of a peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. So this man has corrupted the whole earth. Okay. It even reads in um, I think Revelation, the the earth is defiled. No, Salah, he will destroy them that destroy the earth, right? The Lord, the Heavenly Father, will destroy them that destroy the earth. And that also goes, you know, the, the earth is in uh, defiled on the, the inhabitants thereof, or inhabitants thereof. And the major people, that, the major nation that's pushing out deforestation, that's pushing out all these corrupt, whether it be spiritual ideologies or whether it be the physical damage it's doing to the earth, you know, we're not in a good, a lively uh, environment, in a habitat. Right? It's been defiled, it's been destroyed. And it's even written, this is not our rest. Okay, so we, we were never meant to get you know, everything in perfect. The woman in order, the children in order, you know, the families in having abundance, the families getting on fruitfully. No, we're under the curses. No, we're going through quite the opposite of that. And this is because we sinned, because we transgressed. That's the only way E was able to get up into power. All right, the Lord set up whoever he decides to have a rulership over the earth or over a kingdom. Right? And it says in um, Daniel, the fourth chapter, and setteth up the basest of men. And E is the basest of men. Right? He's on the lowest level. He's just been given that power, right? That the Lord's name may be magnified. Same as Pharaoh, you know. Revelation 17 and verse 2. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Right? So this is ultimately what's led to a situation where the, the Lord's going to bring a great destruction upon this place. And when I say this place, I don't mean this whole earth, although it'll be um, around various parts of the earth. The chief spot is going to be Babylon the Great, right? That's actually known in the scriptures as turning into a lake of fire, right? Like a, a, a lake is a lot of <laughs> a lake of water, <clears throat> but this one's a, a lake of fire. So that's going to come through what? Through the various contentions, the strife, the war, the civil war, you know, and the upset between people. It's going to become, it's going to come of the ICBMs, right? Intercontinental ballistic missiles. And it's going to come by the ways of the chariots of the Lord, right? The chariot of Israel. So Joel chapter 3, verse 9 says, Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. And Gentiles, that word means nations, right? People from a certain uh, lineage, right? All it means is ethnos, ethnicities. So it doesn't specify a specific one, it specifies specific. But it means, if you say eth ethnos, ethnos, that generally means all nations, okay? Israel, sometimes you read about Gentiles, which is the Israelites that went astray, you know, went into the philosophies, as we read earlier, the gods of the nations are idols. So certain times you read about Gentiles, it's talking about the Israelites that went astray and started following into these other nations' gods, you know, going into Islam, going into Hinduism, Buddhism, so on and so forth. Any you know, philosophy that isn't of the scriptures, even people that go into the scriptures and do it wrong. You know, that would be plantation Christianity would be considered a Gentile because you've been you've come away from the law, you know, you started shaving your face. You started eating pork. Salah here. So you started keeping a beard. Right? You started abstaining from pork. Right? So then if you're now in this truth, you're no longer a Gentile. You've come out of that Gentile state of mind. But here when you read it, you know, it means nations. So all the nations, because all nations have gone against Israel. You know, and it doesn't mean a landmass. You know, I mean it means a lineage. So, so there's a, all nations have gone against the lineage, the people group of the Israelites. All right, so the Lord is going to have to bring recompense for that. A lot of the Israelites have gone against the Lord. 
All right, so two thirds of the Israelites in Babylon the Great are going to have to be cut off by slaughter. Okay, the Lord's going to kill two thirds of the Israelites in Babylon the Great. That means there's double as many Israelites will die in Babylon the Great than will make it. And I keep saying in Babylon the Great because you have to, that one third, two thirds is not talking about the whole earth. Right, I said in all the land, singular. So if anyone's saying in all in two thirds is talking about the whole earth, you know, you, you're going to have to revisit that. Because that, that would be erroneous. Okay. Joel 3 and 9. Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords. And your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say I am strong. So this is representing the tilling tools. The tools to use to, to um, farm. To cultivate farmland. And so on and so forth. To be productive. You know, they're going to have to use it to be destructive. Because the earth is going again into a time of war. Right? W-O-E, war. And the third war, W-O-E, correlates with the third world war. Right? And that's something that you need to watch. You need to watch the tensions. You need to watch the alliances. Right? You need to watch out for the enemies. Right? You need to, we need to be occupied in prophecy. Let's get that out of Sirach. Sarah 39 and 1 it says, But he that giveth his mind to the Lord the Most High and is occupied in the meditation thereof will seek out the wisdom of all the ancient and be occupied in prophecies. Right, so if you're giving your mind to the law and it talks about meditating, right, meditating the law. It says that a lot in Psalms. I will meditate in thy ways. Right, so we need to be meditating upon the law and when you, you're occupied in that meditation, you will seek out the wisdom of the ancient. Right, of the fathers. We'll understand, right, how did how did we go astray? Right, how how did we transgress? Therefore, how do we repair? Well, then how do we repent? Okay, because that's what it's all about. If we don't want to get caught up in the third war, in Jacob's trouble, in the ICBMs, in the chariot fire, we want to get caught up in the chariots. Right, not caught up with this devil's judgment that's meant for him. So we need to go... Let's see if I can find that. You have found it. Deuteronomy 32 and 7. Remember the days of old. Consider the years of many generations. Ask thy father and he will shew thee. Thy elders and they will tell thee. Right, so we're meant to call back to the ancient path. Right, how were we doing it before? Because we were, we were not perfect. Right? We've all, always slipped up throughout history. But we're certainly at a low, low point. Okay, so we need to recall, all right, well, what's written in the law? Not that we're saved by the law, right? But we establish that law through faith. Right, so we have to understand Right, what's what's in this law? How do I become, you know, pleasing unto the heavenly Father? We're referred to as as his wife. Right, the scriptures speak on the dynamic between a man and a woman. A man was created first. The woman was, was created for the man. Right, to serve the man, to be a helpmeet unto the man. When you go into the word wife, it means a, a female servant. Okay, so we are to be that unto the heavenly Father, a helpmeet. I'm not coming to him, dictating shit to him. Right, we are to fall in that order, right, and take um, the following position. Okay, we're also referred to as a chast, to be as a chast virgin, right, to Yahweh Shai. 2 Corinthians 11 and 2, For I am jealous of you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chast virgin to Hamashiach. But I fear, lest by any means, as a serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Hamashiach. Okay? So we're to be that, that virgin, right? That wife unto the Lord. And this is how we escape, right? We escape through our works and faith. As the, the only way out is through Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai. Right? There's some evil, perilous times upon the earth coming, man. No, and it would it would serve us to serve the Heavenly Father correctly. Right? You don't want to be, I'm speaking to myself as well. 
you know, we all slip up. You don't want to be in that time. And the Lord says, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. You know, that would be a fearful thing. You know, we denied all this shit in the world for to slip up at the last hurdle. You know, it's about enduring to the end. No one's going to get a medal if it's a 100 metre race and they only do 90 of it. Okay. So Joel 3 and 11 says, Assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen, and gather yourselves, which heathen is the same word as Gentile, right? Gaia, when you go into the Greek, if you're to line it up, it would say ethnos. All right, so that's the same thing. Heathen means ethnicity. It's not necessarily specific, but it just means nations, right? If Jake is behaving, or the Israelites are becoming like the heathen, right? It means they're becoming like these other nations. Okay, they don't, they're not keeping the covenant, so on and so forth. All right, Joel 3 and 11. Assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen, and gather yourselves together round about. Thither cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Yahweh. Let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Yahweh Shapat, for thou wilt sit to judge all the heathen round about. Okay, and that word there, Yahweh Shapat, or is it written there in English, Jehoshaphat or Jehoshaphat? Or Jehoshaphat, right? It goes to the Hebrew word Yahweh Shapat, right? Which means Yahweh, the Heavenly Father, and Shapat means judgment, right? So this is a, a place of chief judgment from the Heavenly Father, right? Where he's going to put hell on these nations. And again, a lot of Jakes as well. So verse 13 Put ye in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come, get you down, for the press is full. The fats overflow for their wickedness is great. And the script, scriptures also speak on a wine press. And that's, I won't get too into that. We're in Revelation 14. What are the grapes? Who is this that cometh from Edom? Right, Isaiah 63 and 1. You can line that. Joel 3 and verse 14. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. For the day of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai is near <clears throat> in the valley of of decision right? and what is it saying Obadiah as well it's not just on E right but everyone that followed E everyone that wanted to get down with his system right get down with his philosophy his democracy his various different ideologies he pushed out he's very slick with it as well right Obadiah chapter 1 because there's only one chapter so I also just said verse 15 it says for the day of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai is near upon all the heathen as thou hast done it shall be done unto thee Thy reward shall return upon thine own head. Okay. So as you've done, have you've pushed out as a man sow, that shall he reap. Right. But the Lord is not just displeased with a few. Right. Many. Multitudes. Multitudes in the valley of decision. Right. The Lord's going to do away with a lot of people. <clears throat> Again, we're, we're praying we're not caught up in that. Right. So we're praying we're doing everything in our power, which is it's only of the Lord that can direct us in that. But we have that illusion of choice. So we do everything in our power to make our calling an election show. We do everything in our power to please the Heavenly Father. Right? But understanding it's not of works, but it's of the election. Okay, so no one can boast and say, well, you know, I did this many videos, I did this I was at camp for this long, I did this, I've been in this for this long. You know, it's about the election ultimately, which was decided before we were in this fleshy vessel. So Isaiah 66, verse 15. It says, for behold, Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai will come with fire. Okay, so there's going to be fire. There's going to be a lake of fire in Babylon the Great. For behold, Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai will come with fire. And with his chariots like a whirlwind, to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire and by his sword will Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai plead with all flesh. And the slain of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai shall be many. So it's not just a few. It's not just people here and there. You know, they start, start dropping. They're going to start dropping like flies, as they say. You know, there's going to be a lot, a lot of destruction. The day of the Lord is near upon the heathen. All right, there's a, there's a deadly time coming. Let's see if we... Right, Joel chapter 3 and verse 15, it says, The sun and the moon shall be darkened, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. The Lord Yahweh by Hashem Shai also shall roar out of Zion, and utter his voice from Jerusalem, and the heavens and the earth shall shake. But Yahweh will be the hope of his people and the strength of the children of Israel. So going through this, Jacob's trouble, you know, there's going to be some that are saved. 
right, a remnant. And that's that's the them that are written in the book of life. They they will be protected. They'll be covered by faith or through faith by Yahweh Shai's blood. Okay. So we could we'll we'll close it there. We'll end it there. I pray it's been edifying, exhorting on to the next video, Lord willing. Giving all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Racha Kudash, Brakha Yahweh, Brakha Yahweh Shai, Brakha Yahweh, Brakha Yahweh Shai, Brakha Yahweh, Brakha Yahweh Shai. Shalom.